Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the first ever GSU talk organized by Graduate Student Club, School of Business and Economic UPM. Okay, my name is Idara Yu and I will serve as your moderator for this talk today. Uh, but before we proceed, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Abdul Rahim to recite doa. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry, uh, before we proceed to our event today, I would like to invite all Muslims to recite together Umur Kitab Al-Fatiha. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'udu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Idina Sirat wa Mustaqim Sirat Al-Lazina An-Amta Alayhim Ghayri Ma'udubi Alayhim Walatolin Amin Oh Allah, we bless our guide and our program which runs smoothly today and achieve this objective inshallah So we pass back to you Ida Thank you, uh, Mr. Abdul Rahim. Okay, now I would like to welcome the president of GSE, Mr. Anik, to give a short welcoming speech. Mr. Anik, you're welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me for the for the speech. So, as uh, as a president of Graduate Student Club School of Business and Economics, University of Putnam, Malaysia, I want to welcome all the participants and our distinguished guests, and uh, my fellow executive committee members in this first GSC talk session. This is the initiative by, by our executive committee of 2021. This is the first ever GSC talk. And uh, GSC talk is about uh, giving knowledge related to practical and uh, market related information and knowledge to the students because when even uh, PhD students, the master's students who are doing research, they are writing their thesis and uh, sometimes writing the proposal as well. They need some information what is happening in the practical world. And also it is good for them to know about what is happening, uh, what is happening in the market. So this platform will let everyone know about the updated knowledge of uh, what is happening in the market so that they may, they may uh, they may utilize those knowledge in writing the thesis as well or maybe maybe to enhance their knowledge and to 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 become aware of what is happening in the market so uh, because the because of the short of, shortage of time i would again want to welcome dr warda who is uh, very much dedicated very much passionate about leadership and the related topics and she have a very vast experience of uh, uh, of uh, teaching and also businesses as well. She has worked so many with so many businesses. So I want to welcome uh, our distinguished guest, Dr. Warda, and uh, she will be discussing about uh, leadership and the pandemic. So welcome, Dr. Warda. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Ida, you have to unmute. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, you, right. you remind me if I forget to, yeah? <laughs> okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, guys, I'm so glad. And of course, we are also glad to have uh, you today, Doctor, with us uh, to talk about leadership and pandemic, uh, an issue that is becoming more and more critical nowadays. But before we proceed uh, with the talk, let me first introduce uh, Dr. Wada. Okay, Dr. Wada started her career as a tutor in Curtin University of Technology in Perth, uh, and then she joined Taylor's College when she came back to Malaysia. She then worked in the small business sector before joining International University Malaysia as a, as a lecturer. In 2009, she joined Open University Malaysia as a senior lecturer, then went on to become a deputy dean, um, then dean of business school. And in 2017, 17, Dr. Warda joined Edinburgh Business School as the MBA program director and then as the associate head of school. She joined Mauritius uh, University for a short period as deputy vice chancellor before leaving academia. Uh, now, Dr. Warda is a management consultant and her specialized area are strategic management and leadership. Okay, I won't take uh, more uh, another another minute. So now I would like to invite Dr. Warda to proceed with her talk. Dr. Warda, thank you. Why? Um, 
Okay. All right, can you see my slides? Yeah, uh, just stop me. Um, no, if I forget to, to unmute or, or anything, I'm not that good in IT. And it's my first time ever using Zoom. Yeah, because I usually use, uh, I don't know, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, Blackboard, and so on for, for my other uh, projects in other universities. So a very uh, pleasant afternoon to everyone. Thank you for spending time to be with me today. I know it's not easy to spend one hour listening to someone talking about management. Yeah? So I admire your passion and thank you so much. Um, well, first of all, I just want to explain a bit about the format that we're going to be using today. So the first part, um, not to say to be a bit boring, but the first part will be more academic, yeah? uh, tailor-made because you are all postgraduate students. Yeah? So I'll be sharing with you um, what important management gurus have said about leadership and the pandemic. Okay, so we're going to go through um, a few uh, topics uh, that has been discussed by McKinsey and Co. and also Harvard Business Organization. So that's the academic part. Yeah? The second part, I'll be answering the questions that Anik actually sent me yesterday. So there were a few questions, interesting questions. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to answer those questions. Um, in the second part of the talk. So please bear with me while I'm going through the slides. Anything, and, uh, um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, these questions yeah. are actually given by the, the students who are present yeah. here, actually. So they are actually the questions of them. And uh, yeah, it's not my question. Uh, yeah, sorry. I need to to me. Yeah. yeah I know yeah. it's from all of you. Um, yeah. Very interesting questions, actually. Um, thank you for those questions. Um, if you realize that some of the questions have been tricked, I have, I have not changed the meaning of the questions, uh, but I'm sort of a grammar uh, Nazi, so I corrected the grammar for the questions. Yeah? So, <laughs> so, so, so please uh, recognize your own questions then. Um, I'm not a very formal speaker, so if you need to ask questions, um, you can do so, yeah? or you can wait until uh, the first half has finished, and then we can go on to the uh, informal part of the, the talk, all right? So leadership and the pandemic, other lessons to be learned. Let me pose you a question. Are there any lessons to be learned? Any of you? Do you think there are lessons to be learned? <laughs> if you yeah, think there, are... That, uh, there are no lessons to be learned that we can uh, stop the talk right now. <laughs> No, I think that we have so many lessons to learn just because this pandemic has never been there before in our entire life. And we have not seen this kind of situation before. So I think this is an opportunity for us to learn and to see where we can improve our businesses and ourselves to become a good leader and to make our businesses more successful. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Anna. Um, so flashback. Um, to 2020. So we're now uh, very fast forwarding to 2021. Uh, so the pandemic started much earlier than that. Yeah. Um, but we were mostly hit um, in the beginning of 2020. Uh, um, I don't know where you are right now. I think uh, most of you are all over, probably not all of you are in Malaysia. Some of you are overseas, right? Um, so I don't know how this has actually affected you, but these are some um, of the photographs that I think show what we have been going through for the past year. Yeah. So this is a virus um, that has been hounding us. Yeah. We can't go out. Uh, we can't go to school. We can't go to university. Most of us can't go to work. Uh, we can't go anywhere. So we've been lost um, of touch with our families. Yeah. Um, and in the state of sadness, I had a student um, recently last week, actually, and she was texting me, sorry, doctor, I can't um, actually hand in my master's thesis uh, because my grandma has just passed away and she was just my everything. Yeah? So it sort of um, sums up what we have been going through. So I've lost some uh, people too. Yeah, some family members, some friends, my ex staff are uh, due to COVID too. So I do know the feeling that everyone is actually experiencing right now, you know, the fear that we have been in. And with that pandemic, yeah, um, 
became these models. Yeah, so usually we see GQ models, uh, Giorgio Armani models, and so on. And suddenly, all these people who are wearing uh, the uh, these suits are on TV. Yeah, um, and it's hot. Yeah, I'm not a doctor. Uh, my but my daughter is a doctor, and she said it's very tripling hot uh, when you're wearing this suit. Um, and every day when she goes to work, um, as a mom, I feel very worried. Yeah. Uh, so this is what we are going to talk about, other lessons to be learned. So I'm not going to talk about you know, um, what uh, the prime ministers are saying yeah? or what CEOs of large organizations are, are saying. Yeah? I'm going to go through leaders for you and me. So we are all leaders. Yeah? Uh, what lessons should we learn as leaders? Yeah. So this is what we're going to talk about. So many people are without money, without food, without water. Uh, many have also lost their jobs. Yeah. I think in Malaysia alone, thousands of people have lost their jobs. Yeah. Um, it's much worse in lesser developed countries. Um, people um, lost income and so on, lost their place of living. And the streets, the busy streets, yeah, New York, Tokyo, whatever, um, are now empty. KL is not empty. It was empty for a while, uh, for a few months, but now it's not empty anymore. Yeah, I think people, <laughs> people have started working today and it's, uh, it's very busy today, but for, for quite some time, you would never see this. Yeah? You would never see a big city like this being empty. It's sort of uh, the scene that you would see in a horror movie, right? Yes, uh, usually yes, you see yes, horror yes. movie or zombie or whatever. Zombie, zombie, zombie movie. Yeah, zombie. <laughs> uh, the cities um, are like this, yeah? Um, so this is what is happening. And this, this photo here, what is this? Empty shelves? Mm, yeah, yeah empty these shelves. are empty shelves. And where is this empty shelves? Panic buy. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know where it is. I got this off uh, Google, actually, off the internet. But when I, I looked it up, and guess where it is? Malaysia. It is? It is in Malaysia. Yeah. So Malaysians are very fond of panic buying. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is, I think, one uh, Yon or something. So uh, Aeon, I think. So the shelves are empty. Yeah? Um, I think maybe during the first MTO. And the last one, um, the last photo here is the one that I really want to talk about because this concerns us as organizational leaders. Yeah, so what is what is this? Which one? What is the, this picture all about? The last okay. one? Which, which? It's work from home. Oh, it's work from home. Yeah, yeah it's work from home. Okay, so what we, we, we're seeing is that um, this guy here um, is actually trying to work with a baby on, uh, on his lap. Yeah? Um, um, so that um, he can look after the child because uh, the, the nurseries are also all closed and so on. Yeah? So, so we, we have to have, um, we have to have, um, a lot of adjustments to be made yeah, in the way that we actually um, work. Now, hang on. Um, how Do you have this on the right? I, I want to... Okay, okay, that's fine. How do I get rid of this one? Which one? Uh, 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 this, I, the I slide want... you mean, Doctor? No, the... Uh, the... Okay. Because uh, it will it will uh, clutter up my screen. <laughs> okay, that's why. Okay, so um, the next few slides, yeah, uh, we're going to share some thoughts from management guru. So it's not my view. Yeah? It's not my view. It's management guru, and bear with me for the uh, the appearance of the slides. Uh, you know why? Because um, the slides are a bit cluttered because I've taken out um, important paragraphs uh, from the journal articles. Why? 
I know it's not good. You, we're supposed to have uh, big letters for, for our PowerPoints. But being students, I know that when I ask you to read up an article, only probably 10 or 20 percent will go and read up the article, and the others will simply read the slides. Yeah. So I don't want you to lose out on that knowledge. So I put in um, a few paragraphs. So these um, slides are uh, yeah a bit cluttered. Yeah, the first few ones. Okay. So according to McKinsey and Company, yeah. Um, there are five behaviors to help leaders navigate the pandemic and recovery. So this is what McKinsey and company um, say are the lessons to be learned. Okay, this is what they say leaders should do as a result of the pandemic. So they have given actually um, five views here. Yeah. Um, organizing by a network of teams and so on and so on. And we look at uh, at each one of them uh, one by one because they are actually uh, very important um, factors. Okay, so the first one, according to McKinsey and Teams, is that when a pandemic occurs, yeah, when a pandemic occurs, or you can also take it as when a big crisis occurs, uh, such as this, you must actually launch a network of teams. Okay. Because usually you have a functional structure or a product structure, which is a formal structure of the organization. Yeah? So when um, you face something like this, a pandemic, it is something which is different. So you have to start creating teams. Okay? So these teams will actually tackle the current strategic priorities. Okay? So for example, let's take example. Um, you have the hospital. Yeah? A normal hospital, we have the, the hospital, uh, administration and then you've got the different wards yeah and then you've got the doctors the mo's the nurses and so on but once there is a pandemic for example they create teams so these teams might look after covid patients so apart from their normal work yeah they are actually assigned to look after covid patients and so on yeah? so if you take a business organization so you have uh, one organization, uh, no, you have the formal structure that you or, uh, originally have, and then you launch a network of teams because things are changing. Okay. So HR, for example, there might be a team um, of people from different departments yeah, um, who actually look after the situation during the pandemic. Okay, People who are working from home, how do they manage the people who are working from home? Is there a group A? Is there a group B? Yeah. Um, how do you actually submit um, your work yeah? to normal emails or, or, or to a certain support system and so on? So you have to create a network of teams. Yeah? And as a leader, once you have created the team, you get out of the way. So you empower the team to do whatever is needed, but you support them without micromanaging and this is the part that i want to stress micromanaging yeah um, so leaders when they are facing a, a huge crisis they tend to micromanage so they don't let the people do um, the work they don't have empowerment everything must be reported to them but mckinsey has said that once you have the team going once you have empowered them yeah, to do something you leave them be yeah and during this uh, pandemic, for example, we've seen people who have stepped up boldly. Yeah, people who have done great things. Can you name a few people that uh, uh, leaders who have uh, done great things in Malaysia, perhaps, or overseas? I don't know where you are right now. Um, anybody can share. So you have people like what? A bit new. Yes. Great, I wanted that answer and you suddenly gave me that answer. Uh, can you just uh, please explain in one or two lines? Pardon? What has he been doing? Uh, he uh, helped the poor and vulnerable groups of people and then help them give their food, give their home. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and I think he has gone uh, over and about. Yeah, and we, we haven't seen. Uh, he is just a normal man like you and me. Yeah, but the things that he has done during the pandemic um, is, mashallah, we, 
you know, I, I cannot even imagine doing the things that he has done. So people have actually stepped up to do things. Yeah, leaders have stepped up um, to do things um, that need to be done. Okay. Um, so this is the first one. So different organizations will have different teams. The university, for example, uh, they might have also set up a team. Yeah. So instead, I think most universities, um, when I was uh, teaching in um, Edinburgh Business School, and I was, uh, I was also teaching part-time in Putra Business School. Yeah. And I think the first week of the pandemic and a team was uh, created very fast. Uh, so that classes could actually go online. Yeah, when we always do the classes in the classroom, uh, there has to be a team of people who are actually looking at things online. Yeah? So this is the sort of things I'm talking about. So this is a network of teams. Second one, uh, deliberate, calm, and bounded optimism. Very management words, yeah? Uh, so very management words. And um, I think this is... Uh, something, something which is actually old, but sometimes people coin it, um, uh, coin new words for them, and so on. Uh, people might use different things to describe this. Yeah, um, McKinsey is saying that as leaders, we have to empower people. Yeah, we have to empower people to make decisions across the organizations, and because this is something new. Yeah, this is something new. We have not experienced uh, in uh, a pandemic in our own lifetime. So we would probably make mistakes yeah, when we are making decisions. Yeah? So we have to learn quickly. But the thing is, we can make mistakes. But how do you actually portray ourselves? Yeah? So if you see every day um, who comes uh, at 5 o'clock in Malaysia, for example, I, I don't know, 5 or 6 o'clock, who comes on or live on TV? There's an artist or a leader who comes live on TV every afternoon to uh, share statistics. And um, 3DG. Yes, yes <laughs> and 3DG, right? So uh, um, instead of following artists, now we're, we're following Tan 3DG because um, he is a, the leader yeah, um, who shares with us the statistics. And he is one guy which actually portrays this deliberate count. Okay, so um, he has the ability to detach yeah, from a short, uh, fraud situation, think clearly about how he will navigate it. So he has to think. And you, you imagine yourself being in his position. Imagine yourself for a while being in his position. Yeah? Uh, government saying, no, we have to do this. The netizens are saying, uh, we must open uh, the shops and the supermarkets because business has to go on as usual. Uh, the hospital staff are saying that no, we have to close everything down or else we cannot manage. Yeah, and, and so on. And he has to juggle everything and get um, the facts right and make a decision together with his team. Yeah, um, and display that confidence. Yeah not overconfidence yeah and you've got this this second uh, thing here which is called bounded optimism um, or confidence combined with realism yeah so don't be too optimistic as a leader you can say no 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 it's okay it's okay um we will uh, get rid of covid in in two or three months or we will the company will actually get back on its feet again yeah um, in two or three months trying to instill confidence for investors and, and employees but in this um, kind of situation where we don't know the answer, we don't know what is going to happen because it's something new, then we cannot be overly optimistic. That's why it's called bounded optimism. You have as a leader to display confidence so that people will be confident in your own decisions, but you cannot be overly optimistic. Yeah? Or else, um, if you are seen to be too optimistic and then the things that you say or the objectives that you say you will achieve does not come out, um, what will people say? What are the reactions that you, you will get from your employees or from people around you? Yeah? Um, this is what it is, it is meant by uh, bounded optimism. Yeah? 
Okay, we go on. So in this uh, situation where you face risk um, or you try to be safe, because this is making decisions amid uncertainty. Okay, so how do you act? Yeah. Um, do you, you as a leader and you look at the screen, on the left, you take risk. Yeah? Or you want to stay on the safe side. Yeah? We go back to, to the um, example of the ministry of, um, or not the ministry, of the ministries in a government, for example. Do, you, do they want to actually take risk? For example, you want to open up the business 100%. Um, yeah? You're taking a big risk because um, people will interact. How do you know they will follow the SOPs and so on? So it will be very risky. And the decision, for example, by the ministry, yeah, leaders in the education industry to open up the schools. If they wanted to be safe, we still close the schools. Yeah, but they had to take a risk um, to open up the schools. And yesterday there was a news article that said that um, in one school, um, 20 teachers and students had to be isolated, yeah? had to be quarantined because uh, one of the teachers actually um, had COVID. So that, that is a risk that the leaders from the Ministry of Education had to take. Yeah? So it's always a balancing act. Yeah? They're trying to make decisions um, amid uncertainty. Okay? So they have to be very confident yeah? uh, and you have to talk uh, risk facts, and this comes to this very important um, item here. Yeah, this is one lesson that you need to learn. You've learned this in management, in organizational behavior, in strategic management, in leadership, probably communicating effectively. And today I'm going to mention this three times. McKinsey says this, Harvard says this, I say this. You need to learn to communicate effectively. Yeah? How, do you, how do you do that? So as a leader, when something bad happens, a pandemic happens, or you make a wrong decision, should you just assign your communications or PR staff or legal staff to address questions? Yeah? In times like this, the leader himself has to come to the ground. Yeah? So you cannot assign someone. Uh, to answer questions about this. So if you are in this pandemic, for example, and you're trying to tell the staff, uh, we have to let go of some of you because we cannot afford uh, to have full staff. Some people have to be retrenched. So it shouldn't be the legal side or the HR side who are saying this. It should be the CEO himself. Okay, We are saying that the leaders, at least the GM of HR, um, for example, yeah, should go down to the ground and actually communicate to the staff. Yeah? So why? Because they need to actually show empathy. Okay, they need to show empathy. I've talked to a, a, a lot of people outside. Um, I've seen many people who have been actually retrenched because of COVID. Um, my husband also was let go um, during this pandemic. And some companies do it very nicely. Yeah, they they uh, talk to the people, explain why people have to be let go, um, what's the condition to be like, and so on. Yeah, and when they explain very well, uh, employees will understand. So why why is it important? I'm stressing this point because the pandemic might uh, happen for a long time. Yeah. But if you are a specialized organization, yeah, if you are a specialized organization and there comes a time where you actually need to re-employ your staff, the staff that you have let go, if you have not treated them well, if you simply send them an email, okay, um, we are letting you go because um, um, the company is not viable. Do you think they will, the staff will come back when you call them again? maybe at the end of the year, they won't. Yeah, because they say, look, we have uh, worked for 10 years, but you just let us go like that. But if you, for example, if it is in an airline and you explain to the pilot yeah, that you're letting go that, look, this is a crisis. Um, people cannot travel during a pandemic. 
So we are very sorry that we have to let you go. Yeah? Please understand the situation. And if things uh, turn positive, uh, we will contact you again. Uh, and we hope that you have, uh, you manage to, to survive and so on. Yeah? So some sort of compensation, if not monetary, other sorts of compensation. Yeah? Um, when you need pilots again, you can just call them up and they would actually come and work for you. Yeah? So this is the difference between that, that feeling of empathy. Yeah? If you show that you care for your employees, um, they will tend to help you. Yeah? Not just when pe letting people go, but uh, asking people to take 50% off, for example. Uh, I know many people who have uh, gotten 50% off pay cut or 20% pay cut during this pandemic. Yeah? But if the bosses uh, or the leaders tell them why, explain nicely, um, everyone will accept. Yeah? So this is very, very um, important. And this is not easy. This is not easy. Many people think that communicating is easy, yeah? but it's not. I've seen many people shouting at staff, uh, seen people throwing books yeah, um, at employees, uh, some um, leaders actually making fun of employees in meetings, yeah, and so on. Um, and it's very embarrassing and very humiliating for some employees. Yeah? So you have to be a good leader. You have to show empathy um, towards your employees. Yeah. Um, this is another um, article, okay, and this time it's by uh, is uh, published in Harvard Business. Um, and one of the things that they say is that if you want your team to accomplish great things, yeah, you have to have a heightened sense of responsibility and ownership. You, know, you have to show them that you care. So how do you do this? How do you show people that you care? Is it, oh, Anik, uh, you've done a great job. So this is money. You, you know, have, have dinner. Is that, is that the only way that show people that you care? Or giving them a, a monthly bonus, for example? Yeah, how, how do you show people that you care? So as leaders, you have many things that you can do. Yeah, uh, because people appreciate it. I saw on the screen just now, you were wishing happy birthdays to people. That's a good way of appreciating people. Um, yes. So how do you show them that you care? So ask them to tell you. Yeah. If they go into hospital, um, give them a short note and so on. Especially during these times. Yeah. So you can always um, send a note, send emails, nice emails, not just work emails, but emails asking your employees how they are doing when they are working from home. Okay showing that you actually care and not just um, asking them, oh, please submit your work, please submit your work when they're juggling with the kids uh, at home and trying to work at the same time. And people who have a lot of kids are actually quarreling over handphones and laptops yeah, because they don't have enough gadgets uh, to go into online classes and working from home. So this is also an issue. So you have to show people that you care. So this is as leaders here. Yeah? Um, you have uh, to be transparent, you have to be honest, and this is one thing that some people forget. Yeah? So I want to just uh, say a bit here. You have to stay connected with your staff. Yeah? So how do you stay connected? So some people say, tell me, you know, doctor, I get so fed up with my boss, he keeps sending me emails. Yeah? Or the admin staff keeps sending me emails because uh, they want this to be done, they want this to be done. This, one, this is not what I'm talking about. Yeah. So staying connected means that you not only ask about the work, yeah? you show them that you understand what they are going through. So you want uh, the staff to actually be smiling yeah? and not look like this. Yeah? Um, you know, so grumpy, uh, um, I don't know what she is looking at um, in the email. Yeah. So you have to allow them to ask questions. Um, and it has to be a two-way street. Yeah? Um, you want the employees to trust you, you have to trust them as well. So when people are actually working from home, you have to trust that uh, they are 
actually doing their work and stop micromanaging them. Okay, uh, stop doing things like that. So these are some of the things that um, you should be careful of. Okay, um, reimagining business strategy. This is another thing that uh, I will be looking at uh, a bit later also. Uh, so I won't mention this here. So it simply means that you have to come out with new strategies and new business models after the pandemic. Okay, so the business model um, that you are using now might not be the same as after the pandemic. Okay, let me show, uh, let me tell you, uh, give you an example. Okay. Um, last time, let's say you were, uh, people were, uh, if you have a restaurant, so most of your sales would come through people walking in and sitting down. So with the pandemic, I think more people, uh, restaurant owners get sales uh, from food panda or grab. Yeah? So it's a different business model. Huh? Um, and, maybe, and if you read the news, e-curve is actually closing down. Yeah, it's a big, uh, a, a big um, it was not doing too well, but it is a shutting down. So all over the world, many businesses are shutting down. Why? Because nobody is coming in. Yeah? Nobody, nobody's coming into the stores. So you have to prepare a new business model. So online selling. Um, you know, people pay, uh, people purchase things from uh, Shopee or Lazada or what, what, what not. Yeah. So this is the new business models that are going to work. Okay. Um, and then you, uh, I've touched this, so I won't uh, touch this again. Uh, it was in the first one. So you need to know um, how to make decisions. Yeah. Come out with new products, new delivery systems, and so on. Okay. So this is the academic part, yeah. Um, one thing one that we should learn or you should realize is that uh, some of the questions that people ask is that what have the leaders done? What have the world leaders done uh, to help stop the pandemic? They have actually been talking together, working together. For example, vaccines, yeah. Um, um, who has coordinated people? Um, the various uh, governments and they have tried to segregate uh, the dissemination of the vaccine. Yeah? Or people talk about uh, tourism industry. When is the tourism uh, industry going to commence? Yeah? How are countries going to do this? Are people going to have passports, uh, which is shocked? Yes, this person is vaccinated, so she can actually travel. Yeah? So these are the things uh, people are talking about. And all the world leaders are saying we're all in this um, together. Yeah? Even though you have to have social distancing, um, everyone is working together towards this. Okay, so, and what is the new normal? Yeah, you, you're operating under new circumstances. Yeah, um, you're wearing face masks. Uh, we're lucky we don't have to wear face masks here. If this was a class, I think I would actually uh, I don't know, hyperventilate because I'll be talking with a mask uh, over my face the whole time. Yeah? Uh, so we have to gear up for the new normal. Yeah? What are the new things? And with this, I end the academic part of the uh, presentation. Okay. So these are the questions uh, that some of you asked. Um, how has the pandemic impacted the leadership in Malaysia? How would you rate Malaysian leadership style now in Malaysia? If rated low, how, what can we do to improve it? Uh, it has impacted leadership in many ways. And I have explained some of it. Um, leaders have to actually be more confident. Um, they have to find out new things. Uh, but I wouldn't dare uh, to actually rate the Malaysian leadership style. Yeah. Uh, it's not for me to decide. People are CEOs, people are, are very high up government um, officials. What I can tell you is that leadership style is different in different situations. Yeah. So if you have taken leadership, you know that you have autocratic leadership, you have transformational leadership, you have servant leadership and so on. So during this pandemic, yeah, some leaders need to be autocratic because they need to put their foot down. Okay. I'll give you a good example. If the government does not say 
there must be an MCO. You cannot travel interstate. What will happen tomorrow? What will happen tomorrow? Everyone will go back to their kampongs. Yeah, everybody will travel because nobody is saying that they cannot travel interstate. So they have to be autocratic. And you cannot say no. Um, he, uh, I, I read some comments on the KKM page and say, oh, he doesn't know anything. Why should we wait until 80% of the people are vaccinated before we can travel interstate? They have to say that. Yeah, or else uh, what happened before will happen again. Um, in other, thing, um, other instances, the leaders must be transformational. So they have to change the people, they have to persuade people to do this, to do that. This is the way of doing things. Yeah. So there are different styles of leadership. So if uh, you can't just rate a leader, he's good or, or high or, or good or not, it depends on the situation yeah? and the point of view. And it's very, um, it's very bad uh, to actually generalize. You know, this type of leadership style is wrong. Um, he should be like this, she should be like this. That's not possible, yeah? Because it has to depend on the situation. And why have certain countries efficiently managed COVID and many others have not? Yeah? Um, I think uh, I would need a whole day or more to answer this, yeah? Because why? Different countries have different economic standing, yeah? Uh, some countries are rich enough to buy vaccine for the whole of the population. Yeah? Some countries have bought vaccines more than their population. And then there are low income countries or less developed countries that cannot even afford to buy 50% of their vaccine of the for the population. Okay, so this is one. Um, one another thing that you can say is the law. Um, and you can also talk about culture, national culture, okay? So if you go and Google, uh, there's, a very good, uh, there's a very good video on um, how Taiwan yeah, actually managed the pandemic. And I really like that. Um, and was, when I was teaching OB last, last semester, I, I shared this with the students, but we don't have time for that. Um, you just Google that. Now, the people, are very disciplined, yeah? You say, uh, follow SOPs, they follow SOPs, they say, you, the government says, thing and they follow, yeah? Um, here, some follow, some, uh, some Malaysians are very creative, yeah? You say, you cannot do this. Oh, I cannot write, uh, I cannot uh, exercise here, but, you know, uh, they turn it around so that, uh, they manipulate the situation. Yeah. Uh, so Malaysians are very creative. Um, so that depends. Yeah. So you've got economic well-being. Uh, you've got different cultures. Yeah. Um, and you also have different laws. Yeah? How people react to laws. Um, in some cases, they know that um, if they break the law in Singapore, for example, you you uh, litter. And you get a huge fine in Malaysia. You litter. Oh, never mind. Uh, everybody litters. Uh, things like this. So it differs. So that is part of the answers. There are many, many reasons um, why there are different results for different countries. Yeah. In Australia, for example, when I talk to my friends there and my 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 family there, and they say, "Well, oh, there's a COVID case. Two COVID cases in Queensland. Every everything is on the lockdown, and they have to wear the mask." And everybody gets so excited. I said, what are you guys so excited about? Two cases? I said, we have 2,000. <laughs> 2,000. And everybody is smiling. Yeah. So the reaction of the people are also different. Yeah. So this is why um, it's not that the countries have not managed it efficiently. Uh, it's also on the part of the people. Are, are we doing our part? Okay. Number eight, I'm going to avoid because it's just the same thing. Yeah. Um, different countries have different uh, leadership styles, different laws, um, different culture. Okay. So you can go through that. 
uh, what are the contributions of world leaders towards ending this pandemic? So you've got the vaccine, um, we've got this ban um, country across countries, traveling across countries, unless there are uh, important things, important events, okay? They're doing a lot of things. Educating the people, yeah? Um, it's not that they're not doing anything, they're doing a lot of things. It's just how we accept it yeah? and how we actually appreciate it. Now, number seven, what are the preparations for the future pandemic in terms of online university education in Malaysia? Um, I'm, I'm not at liberty to say, I have nothing to do with the uh, university education anymore right now. Um, but I think what is happening is that before the pandemic, only open university and Wawasan universities uh, were actually mandated universities to do online um, university education, formally mandated. Yeah? Uh, but since the pandemic, I think um, everyone has been using um, online as a delivery method for university education. Now, if this continues, yeah, if this continues, um, for me at least, because I have been working in an online university, um, in Open University and also in Edinburgh Business School, we have to actually educate the lecturers and the students on how online university education works. Yeah? So in class, when you go to class, you are expected to answer questions, face-to-face -face communication. Um, when you do online uh, education, many students switch off the videos and there's no two-way communication. Yeah, uh, I understand this uh, because some of them um, do not have uh, proper lodging. Yeah, they might be sharing spaces um, at home and it's not conducive for them to open uh, the video. Yeah, that might be one. Um, the other thing, the lecturers also, we are not quite, not everyone is, familiar with online education yeah and some of us think that uh, because we are communicating online that is you know, um, that is online learning it's not yeah that's just one form of learning so there are other things that need to be done yeah? um, so if um, this goes on for a long time then the university administrator um, should actually look into doing uh, these things as well so not just the classes are online um, the exams are online, they have to look into other things as well. Yeah? So if they're doing um, the exams, open book exams, the level of the exam questions, for example, should not be easy. It should be application and not um, knowledge-based questions. Yeah? And the teachers or the lecturers need to be trained on this. Yeah? Need to be trained on this. It's not, it's not simple. Uh, as, uh, as you see, people were, were, were talking about teachers did not do the online uh, TV, you know, the educational TV uh, incident did not pronounce properly. Not everyone can pronounce properly. Yeah? Not everyone is good in English, for example, or in Malay. You ask me to do it in Malay. If Anik has said, Doctor, can you give us a talk in Malay? I'll say, Anik, very, I'm very sorry. I cannot do the talk because I cannot speak in formal Malay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was not... Um, I'm not good in formal Malay, so I would not have been able to do the talk. So you have to train um, the educators. So these are the things that we should talk about. Um, number four, five, and three, uh, talking about how a pandemic affects uh, management practice, uh, what are the attributes of a leader, uh, what are the strategies uh, that you should, you should learn. This one I will cover in the next slide. Yeah. Uh, because they are all um, interrelated. Okay, this is my uh, last 15 minutes. Yeah, last 15 minutes. Uh, I keep time. Uh, um, and this is what I actually want you to, to remember. I saved the best. So these are all very easy things. Um, terminologies, no, no hardcore terminologies, no calm boundaries or things that you need to, to, to actually uh, remember in that way. Um, so all the things that I've said here, you already know, but you need to understand and apply. 
okay, you need to understand and apply very basic things. The first one, always remember what defines a leader. So who is a leader? A leader is not the CEO. It's not the prime minister. It's not the president of the student club. Yeah, he or she as a position, yes, they are leaders. Yeah, but they can be, there can be other leaders as well. Because a leader is actually someone who is able to influence the followers to achieve the goals of an organization, a community, a society, a country. So the key word is the ability to influence people yeah, or the followers to achieve the organizational goals. If you can do that for the organization, then you are a leader. Okay, so if the, the person who did the marketing for this influenced um, the students to actually attend the talk, he was able to influence, yeah, that means he is also a leader. It can be anyone. Um, second thing, expect the unexpected. Usually we think about, oh, routine things. Um, bonus. Um, in January or in March, uh, things uh, people will buy this less. But it's good to expect the unexpected. I'll show you a story. When I was in Perth, before I actually resigned to travel, yeah? so I had a new ambition. My new ambition was to be an influencer, to travel and then write my own uh, travel blog. Yeah? So even though I didn't know how to do it. So that was my, my, my new ambition, my new goal. And when I was in Perth, um, I actually bought a lot of yarn to do, to do crochet. And my husband was saying, why are you buying so much yarn? Yeah, you should just buy a few. You, we always come back next year. That's what he said. We come back to Perth um, every year. And I said, no, don't expect that. We might not be able to come back next year. And true enough. We were not able to come back. The same thing when we went to Korea and then we went to Osaka. My husband was saying, uh, don't shop too much. Yeah? I, I wasn't shopping for clothes or handbags or anything. But um, I was looking at things like culture, um, um, things like that. And he was saying that um, it, it don't buy things. We can, we can always come back next year. And I said, but we might not be able to come. And guess what? This is what happened. Yeah. Um, keep up to date. You have to keep up to be informed all the time. So you have Google, you have Bing, you have all sorts of information online. Keep reading. Yeah. Uh, keep up to date because you need to be able to look at your competitors. You need to know what is happening in the world. If you don't, then um, you will lag behind. Okay, and your organization might not be successful. Now, as a strategist, strategist, I think this is um, very, very, very important. Be strategic. Be strategic. Always have options, options, and options. Yeah. Uh, my kids and my husband always say, "You think too much, mom. You think too much." Yeah. Uh, but that's me. Yeah, of course, um, for example, it's just a simple thing, but if this product doesn't uh, sell, what options do you have? If the, the government says uh, you can't go back to university, you know, what are the options that you have? Always keep options open. Okay, always keep options open so you know what you are going to do. Yeah. So this has to be strategic. So you've got all your matrices that you have learned during your master's, your undergrad. Um, yeah, so always keep this in mind. Yeah, not just for organization, but as yourself, as uh, if you are the leader of a family, what are the options that you have? Yeah, if you are suddenly retrenched, how are you going to get money for your family? Yeah, these are things. Communicate effectively, no matter what uh, people say. Yeah. Um, you need to learn to communicate effectively, okay? If you want to be a leader, if you are not able to convince people to do something, then you cannot be a leader because you will never be able to influence them. Yeah? So people must be able to listen to you. 
they have to believe in you in order to do something. Yeah, if you uh, as a CEO, for example, you might be able to force people to do work for you. Do this, or else you'll get fired. Autocratic leadership style. Yeah, but people will just do it because they are forced to. They don't do it with your heart, and there's a difference. Yeah, there is a difference. If you communicate effectively, if you are firm, yeah, you want to do something, firm, you have to do this, please do this. But you are rational and you tell them, we have to do this extra work, for example, because why? Explain the rationale behind it. Yeah? Then people will understand. So this is a skill. Not everyone can do this. Yeah, some people just force things. Some people shout at the employees. Um, you know, um, I'm embarrassed to say, but I once cried in a meeting, a huge meeting, management meeting, because uh, the boss actually sort of shouted at me, um, and I felt so embarrassed and yeah, uh, uh, cried. I mean, not 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 sob uh, aloud, but yeah, I had tears in my eyes. Uh, so you have to learn how to be firm, but rational. This is very important. And then have empathy. This is another one that is very difficult. Very, very difficult. And I think that or when I look at leaders around me, not many have this. Leaders in power position. Eh? True leaders, they will have this because this is a requirement of leadership. So let's look at this cartoon that I got for you. Sympathy. So many people mistake empathy with sympathy. I'm sorry that you're in pain. I'm sorry that you lost your mom. I'm sorry that you lost your dad. Yeah. This is sympathy. Kasian. In Malay, is kasian. Okay. Empathy is, I feel your pain. How does it differ? Here, sympathy, you are telling them that you are sorry because they are in pain. Empathy, you are putting yourself in their shoes. What is she feeling? What would I feel if I lost my, my mom? Or what would I feel if I lost my grandma? You are actually putting yourself in their shoes and trying to feel what they are feeling. That is empathy. Okay, so if you say that you feel empathy for, for women who have to work from home because they are juggling, the husbands are also at home working from home, they have to cook, they have to look after the kids, the kids are running around and the boss has a meeting, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Yeah, uh, what do you have to do? Okay, um, frontliners. Many people say it's okay. Um, uh, kasihan, yeah? uh, pity for the frontliners, but they don't put it, uh, put themselves in their shoes. What must the frontliners uh, be feeling? They're working uh, day in, day out, treating patients when. Uh, their babies or the children are at home. Yeah, and every day that they go back, uh, they might feel, oh no, what if I have the virus? Yeah, would I actually spread the virus, transfer, transmit the virus to my kids? Yeah, so this you have to think about that. Yeah, what are they feeling? You are treating, they are treating other people, but they're not. You no, know, they they themselves might have. Uh, been infected as well. So you have to feel empathy. Walk the talk. I think you know this very familiar. People talk a lot. Uh, they say a lot of things, but they don't do it. Yeah? Don't travel in the state. But you travel in the state. Yeah? Don't go out uh, without wearing the mask, but you go out without wearing a mask. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah? Walk the talk. Um, treat others the way you want to be treated. As a leader, you have to learn this. Now, uh, last time, if you you go, uh, you buy things from Food Panda, and you say, uh, this is just a young boy um, who might not have education or waiting for results, who is the Food Panda driver. But I've been talking to a lot of them, and do you know who they are? They are actually directors. There are some directors. Um, you know, um, I, of course, uh, many um, have been retrenched from airline industries as well. Um, and 
I've talked to many people and sometimes they, they talk to me because they see on the package, you know, if my staff send me something or my ex staff, not my staff, ex staff, they will put doctor or they will put prof there, even though I don't carry the title outside. Um, and they said, um, they will ask, are you a doctor? And they start talking to me because they want to ask questions. Okay, these people need someone to talk to. Yeah. And they might have been earning. I, I talked to one uh, food vendor, I think or Grab, I can't remember. He was an art director earning probably thousands, and now he, he's earning 1,002 as a Grab um, driver. Yeah, things like that. So you treat others the way you want to be treated. If you don't want people to look down on you, you have to respect others. Okay. Um, think not just out of the box, but out of the office. Yeah. So after this, you have to find new strategies, new things, new ways of doing things, new ways of doing things. So think not just outside the box, but out of the office. Should work from home continue? Should you allow some of the employees to actually work, continue working from home? Okay. Or how should you actually do it? Uh, think of those things. Reflect and keep on reflecting. Reflect and keep on reflecting very very important why because you want to lead by example you want to know what you have done wrong in the past and i think this is the most important message yeah history actually repeats itself but in such cunning disguise that we never detect the resemblance until the damage is done yeah so we had chicken pox we had malaria we had pandemic in the past yeah but we forgot because Medical, um, you know, medical expertise has improved. IT has improved, yeah, um, and we forget that it can happen again. We forget that God is up there and He's the one controlling things and not us, yeah. So reflect on the past, reflect on the present, and what do we do in the future? These are the things that you should learn. It's not a new thing. Pandemics have happened before yeah even if you're talking about you know um the ecosystem yeah and we have been saying that uh, the sun is so hot now because we we as human beings yeah um are not uh, greening the earth yeah we're throwing plastic so but uh, you we're using plastic bags ozone layer is not there anymore and so on but we're back to our old habits yeah and during the first MPO, everybody was wearing masks, keeping social distancing. Yeah? New habits now, you go to, to the, the stores and you see people not doing uh, social distancing. I saw a lot of uh, photographs yesterday. People were parents, yeah? parents, supposedly educated people picking up their kids from school. No social distancing. Yeah, so where are the new habits? Yeah, you're back to the old habits. So these things are simple. The new normal, expect the unexpected. Simple things that uh, we forget. Yeah, so if you were to ask me as a last, uh, last reminder, okay, my last one minute. If you were a leader, if you are going to be a leader, what is the lesson that you should learn from this? Is that you should think of yourself as a tree. A leader is a tree. Okay, you have to have very strong roots. Strong roots means strong education, strong knowledge, firm in your beliefs. Yeah, you have to be strong in every way. Yeah, so that you can make good decisions. Yeah. And then you go, and then you have branches. So these branches are actually your followers or your employees. Yeah. And they are depending on you. So if you are not strong, the trunk and the roots are not strong, the branches will not hold out. Yeah. So imagine the trees yeah, or the flowers as the pandemic. Yeah, or anything that is around you that is changing. So seasons come, seasons go. 
Yeah. So autumn leaves, uh, the leaves might be yellow or red in the autumn, and then um, they actually fall down, and then they are replaced, uh, you know, by winter winter leaves. No leaves in the winter, and then come spring, these green leaves appear. So things change around us. Yeah, things change around us, but we have to be able to protect our employees or our family or our followers, whoever they might be. Yeah. So think of yourself as a tree. You have leaves, you protect, uh, you know, you protect whoever is um, leaning on you. Yeah. Um, and you have to be strong. Yeah. That is the lesson that I would like you to learn. Yeah. And, and that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wow. What a great session. Um, yeah. Some of your idea uh, has never occurred before. I, I have never occurred some of the idea before. <laughs> so thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, I just want to check with Mr. President. Do we have time to proceed for Q&A? Yes, uh, we can go for Q&A session uh, right now, uh, Bella. Uh, with your permission, Dr. Warda, if you don't mind, can I'm we fine. open? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, if I'm fine. Have... I think uh, maybe whoever wants to leave, they can leave because we promised them that we'll stop uh, at yeah. six. So whoever wants to leave, you are free to leave. But whoever wants to stay back and ask a few questions, that's fine with me. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anyone who would like to ask the question? Yeah, uh, if Only anybody is... wants to ask uh, any question, then you can uh, unmute yourself or write in the chat box. Both options you have. So I expect some questions from the audience here. Anybody want to uh, ask any question related to leadership, pandemic, and the lessons which Dr. Bertha have uh, delivered to you? Please. Okay, doctor, uh, per perhaps uh, I, should, I shall start the question. If you know. yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your last slide just now, you said about the old habits and new habits, how people uh, need to switch from old habits to the... Uh, New habit, right? Yeah. But um, this is especially in the uh, context of uh, public organizations okay. where the organization culture is there for so long, you know. How do actually we um, deal with this, you know, when now people are working from home, the using of uh, video conference technology as a tool for the meetings, but some are very reluctant. Even some leaders are reluctant to use it. They would prefer for face-to-face -face meeting and such. So how do actually we need to go about it? What is your opinion on it? Yeah. All right, thank you for that. Um, I think in every class that I have or every session, there must be a public servant who ask this question. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a normal question, whether it's an uh, organizational behavior, behavior class or a cross-cultural class or, a, a, you know, a leadership class, usually there will be a person um, who asks this question. And my answer is system. It's very, very difficult. Okay. It's very, very difficult to change because it is culture. It is culture. So if you look at... Um, government servants, for example, the culture has been there for ages, yeah? uh, compared to a, a new organization, yeah? a new business, um, a startup, for example, you, you're starting, so you are creating your own culture. So this culture um, is very difficult to change unless there is a conscious decision uh, by the leaders themselves to change the culture. So the leader who is in charge should be a transformational leader to transform the culture, yeah? So you might say, okay, let's get a great leader, yeah? Let's get a great leader. Um, he will transform the culture. He'll be very empathetic with the, the employees, yeah? do things uh, differently, be very open and so on. But will this work? Not if you don't change a large number of the employees. So let's say you've got this leader. You have to have, um, a group of people who champions your ideas in order for culture change to occur. So if you have, you alone as a leader cannot change. If, for example, you've got 100 staff, you just take a, a very simple figure, 100 staff, yeah? You, know, you need to have at least 10 champions to help you, 10%. People who actually follow your ideas, yeah? 
and you have as a leader you have to actually influence these 10 people who are the champions to actually apply your ideas so these people will come in early so i think that one was was a success in the government sector in the sense that they managed to get people to come in early yeah um they managed to get people to smile you know in my time nobody smiled if you you went to government offices yeah you always see sour faces but now yes very good yeah, yeah, we we, serve, we smile. No, <laughs> we, the the tagline is service with smile. Yes, yeah. So that that is um top down approach. It has to be top down approach because it is practice. So you have to have these champions to change. Yeah. So it's it is a difficult thing to do, but it's not that it cannot be done. So you have to have a great leader. He has to have champions at each level each level yeah and they have to consciously change the way things are being done that's why all the things that i listed down expect the unexpected walk the talk you have to be able to communicate so those are the things that you have uh, to do as leaders so i call these things uh, uh, i i usually tell the uh, the employees my uh, my own group uh, teams last time bringing out the leader in you this is what you must do to bring out the leader in you so if you have this, you share it with five friends. Ask the five friends to share with another five friends. Yeah? And then it goes on and goes on. But it has to be top down. So you cannot change it by saying, oh, let's change the culture. But your, your boss doesn't want to change. It won't change. It won't change. Yeah? Sad to say, it won't change. Yeah? So you have to have a uh, top down. You have to have the boss who wants to transform the others. You have to be able to influence them. Yeah, and there must be champions to do that. Yeah, so I, I, I cannot talk long on this because, yeah, yeah. Okay, but if you, you so want much. to know more, you <laughs> just contact me personally. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, Can we I open for question. another question? Yeah, I have the question. Yes, okay. Yes, I need. Yeah. Um, I've seen like um, after the pandemic, so many businesses, they are facing so much losses that, that sometimes they have to bankrupt or you can say they have to close their businesses. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, there comes the role of a leader. And I, don't, I just wanted to know that, for example, if a business is facing so much downfall and uh, they don't have the money left to spend on and uh, how, how they can play their leadership role over there because normally we see that retaining employees is the key uh, key thing for a leader to do but at this situation when you don't have money to to run your own businesses how a leader can play an effective role a, a responsible role so that the, all the employees they are not affected and all, as well as the business will not get affected as well yeah um, as a business leader yeah i think you've learned this as well as a business leader the main goal is actually profit Non-profit organizations, of course, they have other, other rules, right? Uh, but for a business organization, it has to be profit. So if you are operating in a loss, you have no choice uh, but to let go of your employees. That's where empathy comes in. Yeah, How do you feel empathy? You have to let go because that's why they're, 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 they're in the, the one, my two cents like, be firm but rational. I'm very sorry, we have to let you go because this is a situation we are in. We are in dire straits. We cannot survive anymore. We have to let go. But people will understand because they will know that whether they are sales or not. Yeah, uh, they will know. So for example, my daughter, she's, she's working in um, a car dealership. There's no sales. So, you cannot actually complain if people are being let go because there's no sales. How can you actually cover the salaries? But if you explain why, yeah, and you tell them that you understand the situation that they're going to go through, there are things that you actually can do. One, you can provide them with a very good reference letter. Yeah, not just a general reference letter. He has worked either has worked here as an executive. That is not enough. So provide them with a good reference letter. Yeah, um, she is being let go because of the situation the company is facing. It we would not be letting her go if the company is actually in a good position, and if things 
um, you know, actually improve, we are we would be very happy to take her back, and we would highly recommend her to any organization. You know, do something for them. Let them feel that you are actually doing something for them. Or you can go for other options instead of um, letting go one person. Um, you might have a meeting and asking everyone. You know, I I, I know of some companies who have done it. Um, do you want to let two people go or do you want everyone in the team to get to to actually help the two but everyone has to have a 30 percent pay cut you might decide um, yourself you might decide with your management team or you might decide with the, the employees themselves because the other employees will also be affected so instead of, um, you know, um, you have to think um, because we cannot go to, we have to know the decision or the situation they are in um, in order to answer the question. But there are things that you can actually do, okay, to actually um, help them. Thank you so much, Doctor. That was a wonderful answer. And the strategy you have just shared is so amazing that we can let all the people decide that whether you want to share your salary with those people who are now being decided to lay off. So, yeah, this is, this is one yeah. of the good or strategies. Even, Thank even you so a much. reference letter, yeah? Because, yeah, reference. Uh, yeah, because if uh, somebody goes to, you know, um, oh, you were retrenched, you were not good. The perception there is a person mm. has been let go because it's not good. But if you can provide a reference letter that's saying um, that the person is actually good, it's said that the company is not doing well, that would help them, right? That would help mm. them out. So as a leader, you have to think of all these things. Yeah. You know, don't just, just do it, uh, you know? You have to try your best to do these things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much, Doctor. Okay, is there any question? Because we are already 6 o'clock, uh, 12 minutes past the time. Uh, if uh, You can share with them their emails if I, I don't mind. Yeah, if you have any other questions, you can email me or you can WhatsApp me. I'll be happy to um, answer your question to the best of my ability. Okay. Yeah, because there are so many leaders over here. I think there's so many of them are like at the jobs or doing businesses or even at the club. We have so many leaders. So yeah, yeah anybody so if, yes, you, if you want to know difficult. that how to lay properly, <laughs> then you can ask. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Doctor, for your time okay. and also no uh, all the valuable uh, inputs that you shared. You have shared with us today. Uh, but one before we end the session, Doctor, uh, I would like to request all the participants and uh, to on your camera, put your camera on, so we can have a group photo. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So, Doctor, if you want to prepare yourself. <laughs> ah, no, 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 I'm just this. <laughs> yeah, you are okay. I'm already okay. But <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take uh, the two uh, shot because we have uh, two windows here. Mm -hmm. So, everyone must be alert because I don't know which windows are you are in. <laughs> okay, I'll just take off my headphone. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I can we start now or shall we wait another seconds? President? No, I, I guess we just screenshot one time. Okay, everyone, ready? Smile, a big smile. Leader should smile, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, one, two. Okay, another one. One and two. Okay, uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank everyone to join us today and especially to you, Dr. Wada. We hope that we can have another session with Dr. Wada again. Uh, no worries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right. Because your, your input is very valuable. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to the GSC team uh, who has um, put the effort to, uh, for the GSC talk today. Uh, and I hope that everyone have a great week weekend. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Hope to Thank see you. Thank you, Doctor. Again. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, bye bye. Yep. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.